I don't know how to do it, Shane. I just start with something, eh? Pressure and release makes dumb horses. Pressure and release makes dumb horses. It's an interesting topic, isn't it? Let's delve into this a little bit more. Pressure and release has been used for hundreds of years for training horses. But does it, does it teach your horse anything or does it just get them to do things? So, you know, if you just want to get them to do something and there's an emergency where you have to get them to do something, that would be, you know, you might, that might be acceptable then. And we've got the opportunity now to be getting our horses to where we can do the right thing by them, not just do the right thing by us all the time. So we've got to start thinking a little bit more about how our horses feel about these tasks that we get them to do. And not only that, we need to stay a bit safer. Safe. <laughs> We need to stay safer. If we don't start looking after our horses, the do-gooders out there are going to stop us from riding them because if we're not developing their backs, it's not good for them. If we're all out there getting ourselves killed and we're the most dangerous sport on the planet, besides base jumping, of course, <laughs> um, it's not a good thing. It's not a good advertisement, and they're going to try and stop us. So we've got to do, we've got to do better, so, and we can do better. Um, you do better for your horse if it's if it, that's the only thing not to change the world but just do better for yourself and for your horse keep yourself safer build a connection with your horse <clears throat> to build a connection with your horse you need to give them options you need to, need to develop their thought process not to just have automatic responses all right now um, we've been ta I've been talking about this for a long long time and developing a horse's thought process rather than just making them do things. But um, it wasn't until a few days ago my wife was doing a mentor class for her horsemanship students and she started talking about neuroplasticity. We'll just have a look at that on this little video here and explain about opening up those neural pathways in your horse's mind. This is a human's mind, but you'll get the idea. How does neuroplasticity work? If you think of your brain as a dynamic, connected power grid, there are billions of pathways or roads lighting up every time you think, feel, or do something. Some of these roads are well-traveled. These are our habits, our established ways of thinking, feeling, and doing. Every time we think in a certain way, practice a particular task, or feel a specific emotion, we strengthen this road. It becomes easier for our brains to travel this pathway. Say we think about something differently, learn a new task or choose a different emotion. We start carving out a new road. If we keep traveling that road, our brains begin to use this pathway more and this new way of thinking, feeling or doing becomes second nature. The old pathway gets used less and less and weakens. This process of rewiring your brain by forming new connections and weakening old ones is neuroplasticity in action. Put a little video link down the bottom for you so you can learn about neuroplasticity and it's really important and now this is in humans brains but um it's this works with your horse as well and it works not only with the way they think but the way they move now pressure and release is making your horse or getting your horse to do something but giving it an option it causes it to think its way through a task and if you can develop this in your horse, you'll get a calmer and a, a smarter horse, a more thinking horse. A thinking horse is going to be a safer horse than one that is just told what to do all the time. So we need to really encourage our horses to think their way through their tasks, give them options. Yes, you need to do a certain amount of repetition um, to encourage that thought process, but not so much that the horse doesn't need to think anymore and doesn't need to make a decision. So what I mean by that is if you're running a pattern, you know, add some more variables in there. Once you've got the pattern worked out, add some more variables in that pattern, in that task, to make it interesting and keep your horse on its, on its toes, so to speak. <laughs> so it, uh, not only that, it's good for you. Otherwise, you'll just sit up there going through your tasks and robotically doing it as well. And we don't want our horses to be robots. That's not what, well, that's not what I got my horse for. I hope you didn't get your horse for that because you're better off buying something else besides a horse. But um, you, we did it to, you know, we want to connect with these horses. 
and just telling them what to do all the time isn't going to do that so I encourage you to to give your horse some options in your task release a lot more often not just um, pressure and release but give your horse an option there's more to just pressure and release there's another thing there's another ingredient that's missing in most people's training and that's the option to make a decision so if you could give that to your horse allow them to make the mistake and then correct them I'm sure I've heard that a thousand times somewhere and I'm sure um, those of you who've been studying horsemanship for a while have heard it too and it's a it's a really important thing give your horse an option allow them to make a decision don't tell them off don't be putting a lot of pressure on them if they don't do what you want ask them again that's all you don't have to increase the pressure if there's two times you know you increase your pressure to defend your personal space that's about all but um increasing pressure on a horse that doesn't understand or is scared is just pointless and even if they did do the task out of that you didn't teach them anything you just got them to do something so I encourage you to teach your horses really open up those neural pathways encourage them to get bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger in their neural pathways and in their the physical range of movement and you'll have a better and safer horse I hope you enjoyed this video please leave your feedback um, no matter what it is, I know sometimes people won't agree and you'll put that down there, but that's okay because discussion is what this, the world's all about and we need to have discussion on this. It's been too long in horsemanship where people say there's only one way to do things and we must do it this way because again, you're not opening up those neural pathways and allowing thought process. So we need to have our opinions and we need to be thinking how we could get better at the right pathway.